tech stock, as to what's happening on the economic front, uh, what policies have been uh, implemented, are they working, uh, where do we need uh, to do more, uh, and so forth and so forth. So really that's what this is about, just to take stock on the state of the economy. But also uh, this mission is unique in the sense that it is uh, also to, to, to tee off a, a, a staff monitored program, these uh, gaps, what was need, 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 need to be done. Um, I think that really, at the end of the day, let me let me ask uh, Wojtek to give a summary of the, the findings of the Article 4 uh, mission visit. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister, and uh, thank you all the colleagues. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to say that this mission was also exceptional, exceptional because, the, because of the excellent cooperation that we had uh, at the technical level, at, at any level, uh, with the authorities. Uh, it has been a pleasure to be here, and it was a very productive uh, visit. Um, as, 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 as Honorable Minister mentioned, this mission is a combined mission covering Article 4 issues, but also at the beginning of our discussions of staff monitored program. Now, the staff monitored program, it's not really our program. It's the program of the authorities, it's a program of um, Zimbabwe that is supposed to restore macroeconomic stability and we are just advisors in this process. And, uh, and this, is, this is how I see our role here, to be helpful as much as we can in terms of uh, um, advising the government, um, helping Zimbabwe to restore macroeconomic stability, which we consider um, a very important factor in terms of ensuring uh, robust growth. So let me go over uh, key findings, both on the economic development side, but also in terms of policies that we discussed uh, with, the, with the Ministry and with the, with the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Mainly uh, the discussions focused on um, the DZ obligations related to quasi-fiscal operations uh, to the Treasury. We also discussed uh, steps toward liberalizing the, the forex market, the foreign exchange rate market, but also potential changes in the exchange rate and monetary policy framework. And we also discussed uh, some reforms on the economic governance side. Let me start from briefly discussing where we see the economy at this stage. So one thing that um, I consider as the most important factor in all this discussion, just to give you a context, is the enormous potential that Zimbabwe economy has that is somewhat uh, constrained by these macroeconomic factors that we would like to address. Um, Zimbabwe has enormous uh, natural resources, but even more importantly, uh, human capital resources that uh, if tapped would make growth even stronger and, and more robust, right? But even now, economic activity in um, past year uh, was very strong. Uh, what we see as is very strong expansion in agriculture, in mining, but also in domestic services and trade. And this is because a large portion of this uh, economic activity is in foreign currency which cushion the economy from the impact of macroeconomic instability, or more precisely, uh, currency instability and high inflation. Um, so because of that, we see, uh, and we estimated our growth to be around 5.3% uh, of GDP in the previous year, which is pretty much aligned with the, uh, with the authorities' expectations. And for, the next, for this year, we expect a slight slowdown um, maybe three and a quarter percent of GDP uh, because of the impact of a drought and also because of the impact of uh, commodity prices. Uh, we still expect that the, the domestic part of the economy, trade, services, construction, will remain resilient. I think the resilience here is the key word. Again, because of the, the big part of the economy is cushioned from the instability, it's resilient. Nevertheless, to fully tap the economic potential, this macroeconomic instability needs to be tackled. 
And from this perspective, we are we've been concerned about the exchange rate depreciation since December, which was quite rapid, uh, which then led to substantial increase in uh, ZIM, ZIM dollar prices. Um, on this front, though, I wanted to say that there has been also some positive steps in the direction of liberalizing the foreign exchange. Um, we are seeing the, some action on the on the on the side of the auction policy of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe um, that are that we consider as, as a step in the positive direction, and we we. Uh, we, we, our discussions were about uh, making these steps, uh, taking next steps in this direction. Now, one thing that um, I wanted to also emphasize in the context of, the, of this exchange rate instability are the exchange rate distortions. Uh, it's not only that the exchange rate is unstable, but also because of some restrictions. Um, there is an incentive for the uh, formal sector to move to informality. Um, there are some caps. There is a 10% cap on the pricing in um, in in in, uh, in relation to the official exchange rate, which uh, again is an exchange rate distortion and may be a source of uh, this push towards informality. This affects tax base, this affects future growth, so this is also one of the policy that we discuss. On the policy side, um, first um, I mentioned the, uh, the, the transfer of the quasi-fiscal operations. Uh, a lot of progress uh, has been achieved. Uh, again, at the technical front, uh, we are very happy where things stand. Uh, what we see as important is also formalization of arrangements between the uh, the RBZ and the Ministry uh, in terms of making sure that there is a good understanding how these uh, obligations are dealt with, uh, but also um, finding a room or making sure that there is enough resources to uh, cover these obligations in a way that is non-inflationary, that does not create additional inflation. And the discussions focused on on this on this on this uh, aspect of the transfer. Um, one aspect that we also considered in the in the same context is other operations of the uh, of the RBZ, where um, even though they may be uh, important from the perspective of supporting the economy, they are not the core obligations in terms of maintaining price stability and financial stability. So from this perspective. Ideally, they should be divested or they should be limited or eliminated uh, to make sure that the RBZ focuses on its main core function, which is the price stability, maintaining price stability and financial stability. So our discussions also focused on how to make sure that this is the case, starting from making some of these operations more transparent. Moving on to another uh, important area that I already alluded to, uh, to foreign exchange market liberalization. So there are some steps that uh, can be taken quickly, like again, removal of this 10% um, margin on um, pricing in relation to the official exchange rate. But then there are also uh, steps that need to be taken in terms of making sure that the, a new um, monetary and exchange rate framework uh, is in place and that this framework promotes the main goal of macroeconomic stability. So our discussions were also uh, covering uh, this area. One thing that we consider important um, is also making sure that some of these changes that we are discussing in the context of this potentially new policies uh, are covered or uh, embedded in the law. Right? So there is a discussion whether uh, the, the RBZ Act needs to be changed. Um, the governor rightly mentioned that the credibility cannot be legislated, and I fully agree with it, but maybe on the margin uh, these changes will also help instill more confidence um, in, in, the, in, the, in the policy program to make sure that this stability is restored. Another aspect that we discussed on the policy front is the, the governance. 
Um, here, one issue that um, we discussed in depth was the uh, the establish, establishment of the new Mutapa Fund, um, where we would encourage to make sure that this uh, new arrangement, uh, which is supposed to promote better management of state-owned assets, uh, will be up to the highest standard in terms of accountability, transparency, governance, and so on. So that was another area. Um, we also discussed more in the context of um, longer term issues, other structural reforms that are needed to make sure that this economic potential that Zimbabwe has, again, is, is fully tapped. Um, but I think these were the main elements of our discussions. Um, again, my huge thanks to everybody involved in the process. Uh, I thought it was very, very, um, very, very helpful to um, to have these thorough discussions about microeconomic policy, but uh, also about these very technical issues uh, that the mission covered. Um, and hopefully, we'll be back here soon to finalize these discussions on the on the SMP program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe a few words from me. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's quite clear that the really the, the Zimbabwe economy has been a very resilient economy in the face of various shocks. If you go back to the climate change shocks in, in, in 2019, followed by the, the COVID shocks, and now we are, going, we are, we are having the commodity price uh, downturn, as well as the exchange rate volatility shocks. All these shocks have been buffeting the, the economy, and the economy has been very resilient. I think looking at our average growth rate, in the last three years, 2021, 2022, 2023, we have averaged a growth rate of 6.8% per annum uh, from the, as an average of the 8.5, 6.5, and then 5.3 uh, uh, for, 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 for last year. So that is very resilient growth, in my view, in the face of all these uh, shocks, including the exchange rate of volatility shocks. But of course, it means that if we didn't have then the exchange rate instability uh, that we're currently experiencing, growth could even be faster, uh, it could be more. And that's really the, the, the issue here, that we want to make sure that we, we deal with the stability issues, make sure that the stability so that the growth can be uh, more uh, resilient and even inclusive for that matter, because also sometimes these volatilities, exchange volatilities create inequitable distribution of income. Uh, and then it, it exacerbates that. We want growth to be inclusive, as opposed to basically focusing on a few uh, in the individuals. As, as government, we are, we again, we are encouraged by some of the observations uh, for, from the IMF, uh, but also agree with them in terms of areas that we should uh, 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 look at. Uh, if you look at the, our support to the various sectors, with agriculture, uh, tourism, uh, infrastructure development, the energy sector, that, 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 that should continue. But also, we must make sure that the support is targeted as, as those sectors that are not wasteful, areas that are wasteful that make the most efficient use of government resources so that we can maximize on the growth potential of the of, 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 of the economy uh, the statement from the IMF and our discussions have focused on a, 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 a the exchange rate a reform uh, a areas which we agree with and we are dealing with those as, as, as government and then they were also focused on the impact of on, on the fiscus of the increased liabilities that Central government is taken over from the central banks. We were again, we are dealing with that. Uh, uh, we'll make sure that we're able to to carry this burden through various strategies for uh, that will improve our capacity to carry the burden. Uh, and also, we've taken note of some of the comments around uh, issues of governance and so forth. Again, we is by is we are committed to the high standards of governance uh, in in all areas. Uh, in fact, we established a financial governance uh, committee, which meets, uh, which I chair, and meets. A quarterly uh, covering various aspects of the financial governance and I can ass uh, assure you colleagues the IMF that we will make sure that we stick uh, and, and aim for the high standards and global best practice on, on, on the governance uh, front. Um, uh, perhaps members of Fourth Estate you have one or two questions and comments. We will be releasing a full statement. Uh, the IMF will be releasing a full statement as usual uh, the, at the end of this. Uh, maybe they already posted it on social media. I don't know. But 
but we, we, we are well happy with it as, as, the, as the authorities. There may be one or two questions, uh, for clarification uh, to the IMF especially, <laughs> maybe less to me. <laughs> shall, shall we take three at a time? Okay, I, I'll, I'll fill, Pretty uh, maybe you fill the questions. Say who you are, your name, and you know, your, your institution. Maxwell, the currency, and also maybe hearing from IMF, uh, Yo, are you confident about uh, the structured currency? And also maybe minister, you can come in and tell us um, what exactly is it and how are you going to maybe implement it? <coughs> well, well, I would not want to give any details on the currency beyond the policy guidance that His the Excellency, Excellency. Has, has given so far, and I've followed up with additional principles so far, uh, we cannot give further information. What should happen from now on is for the monetary authorities, through the Monetary Policy Committee, a monetary policy statement, a formal one, will be issued, which will really signal the introduction of that policy and, and the detail that thereof. Uh, for now, what we have said so far from His Excellency and myself is adequate in terms of what you call policy guidance, uh, forward guidance in policy. So, so, so we, we, we end here for now. But, but, the, but the objective is clear, Maxwell, that we're all searching for the holy grail in terms of exchange rate stability. Because we know that with this stability, uh, uh, it implies also price stability. So exchange rate stability, price stability, and once you've got uh, those two in place, then you have macroeconomic stability and more sustainable and more equitable economic growth. That, that's really our target here. Thank you. I had to, I had to answer that, right? I didn't want to wait for the other two questions. <laughs> I should answer that, or you should answer that. I think let me start with Wojtek. Uh, uh, yeah, then I'll, I'll chime in. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me put it this way: the the discussions that we that we've had were very very successful in terms of what we achieved during this visit. Uh, we plan our next visit um, with a view to indeed uh, agree on basic parameters of the program uh, before the spring meetings, which will be conditional on finalizing the technical discussions uh, and agreeing on the policies. In terms of policies, what we want to see, it's more or less what the state, uh, what the press release will cover and what I, what I discussed. Um, and in the context of and maybe I should not refer to this because, uh, again, the details are uh, not yet available and we haven't had any discussions um, in this context. Um, but uh, in the context of this policy announcement, I think we would also like to um, understand it better and in this context discuss any modifications to our uh, discussions if, if or the program if needed. Right. So it's a little bit conditional also on on what we'll see uh, in this regard. Um, having said that, um, as of now, the plan is to progress on the technical discussions as far as, as fast as we can. And then maybe one more point, which is an important point, that whatever uh, arrangement will be in place in terms of this exchange rate arrangement, monetary policy arrangement, the discussion that we have right now in terms of the fundamentals that need to be addressed, this still stands. Right, in a sense that we need to have this in place to make sure that the new arrangement, whatever details will be um, coming out, is successful. So our goal here is to make sure that, that this is the case. Further questions? Yes. Yeah, someone? Yeah. My name is Tafa Zanigazino <coughs> from State of the Nation News. <laughs> uh, from the discussions you just aired out, I, it seems like you were mainly focused on coming up maybe with strategies to boost growth at macroeconomic level. Mm -hmm. But then Zimbabwe's case is different now in the sense that the microeconomy is growing imposingly. 
in all sectors and we've seen some big giants uh, crying you know especially in the retail sector saying no the informal shops are taking over the business so are they did you take time to discuss uh, strategies on how to boost growth on the micro economy economic level so Yes, we did, but not in that great detail. Um, uh, in a way, some of that, uh, the policy responses to that to the issue raised were, cons were, 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 were um, contained in the 2024 national budget, where we sought to formalize certain aspects of the informal sector with a view of, of creating a more a level playing field between the larger players in the, in the informal players, also make sure the, the informal players are netted into the tax uh, uh, system. So, so, so that, that, that is ongoing work, uh, and, and you, you can be sure that we, we are focused on, on, on supporting that. In the past, I mean, we have one of the reasons why we introduced the IMTT tax was to partly net in the, the informal sector into the, uh, uh, the, the tax net. Uh, we also, uh, uh, two years ago, we introduced a location tax where we said that anyone in the informal sector who operates from a non-address uh, under some warehouse owned by a landlord, from now on that landlord is a tax agent who is mandated to collect a, a presumptive tax from the informal sector operator under their roof. So, so that, that, that tax is in, is in place. And then we've gone further in the 2024 budget and required players to, to, to do VAT registration uh, for formal uh, players to uh, also implement the, uh, uh, introduce the, the um, withdraw, what called withholding tax of 5% when they sell goods to, to players in the informal sector. So all of that is designed to, to make sure the informal sector it ceases to be informal. It becomes formal. It's just part of the economy. And of course, we we'll do everything to support that, uh, uh, that, that sector. I mean, we have uh, so many microfinance institutions under the realm of the central bank, and those microfinance institutions are supporting small uh, businesses. We have the Women's Bank supporting female entrepreneurs, with the National Venture Fund supporting also startups, with the Youth Bank supporting uh, youthful entrepreneurs. So all of this is designed to support that SME sector, uh, which is critical. And also through the Ministry of uh, uh, Local Government and also the Ministry of Small to Medium Scale Enterprises, we are also building uh, uh, various pieces of infrastructure in urban areas, uh, uh, areas where the SME uh, players can operate from, uh, uh, market stalls and so forth. You've seen recently at Godin in Blawai, for example, a, a, you know, very beautiful uh, market stalls that, that, that have been done there. All that will go a long way in supporting the, 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 the SME sector. I could go on and on, but it's a very important sector and it is uh, a part of the economy and we're determined to do a, a deeper formalization of it. Honorable oh, Minister, if please. I may add yeah. one more thing. Uh, we are not indeed looking at it from the IMF perspective at the micro level, but we do at the macro level, right? And as I mentioned, the the operations of the foreign exchange rate market uh, to us seems to be a constraint on the development in the formal sector. So there are measures that I've mentioned and the direction that I've mentioned in terms of liberalization of the foreign exchange market would also promote formalization. It would be more a carrot, uh, a bit, but a big carrot in, mm. in, in our mind. Yeah. Very well. Someone else? Okay, I'm um, Romero Rosenberg from the Voice of America Studio Center. I'm truly in Afnuchi, Avana Devi, Avana Kaya, with the local players, the Kumega. All right. I have to start translating all my <coughs> economics into vernacular. <laughs> yes. um, Namsa Stotlong of Unengi, Astratanga Namsa Gota, a Celeste IMF, Ivilapa, or Amavira Mavili. I can only do this here now. Oh, what a lie! We can only go to Imalie to Ukraine. So now Ukraine is angry. We are sitting here stabilizing the slum. So we talk to the local. So we are going to ask. We are going to go to Ukraine. So let's see if we can get some answers. So we can only go to Ukraine. So we are going to 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 go to Ukraine.
akwanise ukuthi aku lokha kwenzayo akubhadalele ngimfanelo kungabi lokunye okabe kuphandle isizako ohlelwe ukubhadalela lokho sithi khona ngesilungu living within our means in terms of fiscal language okunye sikukhangeleyo njalo futhi ikuthi konke lokho sikwenzayo kuqinise ukukhula kumnotho wethu lokho sithi go economic growth ngesilungu ungakhangela umnotho wethu uqinile sibili yakhulu yaphambili ngathi kweminyaka emithathu edlulileyo economy ikhule ne 6.8% i average yayo ngomnyaka ngomnyaka lokho sifuna kuye phambili kodwa lokho kungaqiniswa imali yethu xa iqinile ngoba la futhi izazi ukuthi intengo kuma shops lazo zingabe lokho izikhwela siya phambili zime lokho konke lokho sikuxoxile konke bazaphenjuka njalo abantu be IMF sizobe lokho esixoxa asebenza labo kuhle siyathaba njengohulumende ukuthi hayi hathi kuhambe kuhle I agree with living without within our means. I, I cannot. The economic terms are not easily accessible. In the... One last pressing question. <laughs> uh, maybe we can have a late. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to just give us uh, a roundup of the things that we have been agreed on. Well, well, look, we, we, we have agreed that uh, Zimbabwe must really uh, do everything it can to support the resilient growth that we've witnessed over the last few years, especially post-COVID. Uh, supporting this resilient growth requires us to make sure there is exchange rate stability. That will uh, ensure price stability and therefore growth, uh, sustainability going forward, and more equitable growth, more, more inclusive growth. We, we agreed on that. But also we agreed that as we, 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 we seek this quest for stability, uh, we, we must continue with the measures that we put in place for government to, to live within its means, uh, for government to, to manage its, 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 its borrowings, which that we can afford uh, uh, to pay for our borrowings and not to borrow more. Uh, uh, yeah, th things like that. There's a lot that we've agreed on, uh, but also we've agreed that uh, our exchange rate must be more reflective of, of, of market conditions. We must remove any impediments that uh, can come, come in the way of a, of a fairly determined exchange rate. One that again is in tune with the with the notion of, of, of stability going forward. Um, they will be back uh, again for for further discussions uh, for us to then put in place. A, staff, a full staff monitored program, which will um, uh, run uh, uh, during the course of uh, this year uh, into into next year, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, but of course, there, there will be a, a statement that that will be released, uh, uh, you know, at the end of this. We all have a copy. I can go into detail, uh, uh, you know, in, in, yeah, it goes into detail in terms of the issues that were discussed. Thank you. If I may. Uh, Honorable Minister mentioned uh, looking for a holy, holy grail, uh, but nobody has found it yet. Okay, so I think this is there are these technical discussions that are very, very um, time consuming, and because of that, uh, we have to spend a little bit more time on figuring out the details. But I think, in terms of the policy direction and in terms of the momentum in policies, and in terms of the agreement on principles, uh, we've, we've, we've made very significant progress. It's very, very, very cordial, very constructive meetings, as always. As always with the IMF. Yeah. Okay. I don't know whether I should expose other members of government in here to questions from the fourth estate. Maybe not. But I think I already mentioned who is here. So, so um, not that I'm inviting questions in their direction. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. yeah. yeah, dismissed.